said the people of Yemen, when they would go to Mecca to carry out their pilgrimage, they would not carry with them any luggage, and they would not take with them any belongings or provisions. And they would say, we have placed our reliance upon Allah. We are people of tawakkul, we don't need luggage. He says, but the moment they get to Mecca, they start asking favors from people, food and drink from people. So Allah Almighty, He revealed the verse when He said, take provisions. Take provisions. Tazawwadu. And the greatest of all provisions is taqwa, fear of Allah. But take provisions. Therefore, a Muslim is to capitalize upon every means that Allah has made halal to attain the good of dunya or the good of akhirah. And this does not contradict tawakkul, as Imam al-Shatibi, he said. It does not contradict tawakkul. Rather, it is part of tawakkul. Even if these means seem to be very ineffective and small, you may say, Ya Akhi, my CV is very weak, and my wealth is very little, and my efforts are very small. You have to take the means if you want your tawakkul to be complete, whilst your heart is completely attached to Allah. Therefore, we see when Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam, he became ill and he asked Allah for relief. Allah gave him relief. But what did he say? Urkub bi rijlik. Hada mughtasalun baridun wa sharab. Allah said to him, you want the cure? Kick the earth with your foot. Kick the earth with your foot. A little spring of water will come out. Drink from it and wash your body. You will become cured. Why did he need to kick the earth? Allah Almighty could have caused the water to come out without requiring the ill man to kick the earth. And how strong will be the impact of the kick of an ill man? It will be weak. But Allah Almighty is sending a very powerful message for you and I. We need to do our part. We need to do our bit. And Allah Almighty's assistance will come after that. This is part of tawakkul. Similarly, Maryam alayhi salam, after she had just given birth and she was hungry and thirsty, Allah Almighty said to her, وَهُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ تُسَاقِطُ عَلَيْكِ رُطَبًا جَنِيَّةِ Allah said to her, shake the trunk of the palm tree, fresh and ripe dates will come down, eat from it. Why did she need to shake it? Allah Almighty could have caused the dates to fall on her without the need to shake it. And how strong will be the shaking of a woman to a tree that ten men can't move? Uh, but Allah is sending a message. You have to do your part should your tawakkul be complete. Take the means necessary, send your CV, buy and sell. Do what you can to draw closer to Allah. Attend the lectures even if you see them as insignificant. Whilst your heart knows very well that it is only Allah that allows matters to matter and allows material to materialize. Your heart is only connected to the Creator. This is part of tawakkul. There are certain circumstances that a Muslim needs to place his trust in Allah more than others. A Muslim is to plug tawakkul in his endeavor to achieve everything pertaining to the good of dunya and akhirah. However, there are certain circumstances where a Muslim needs to have extra reliance upon Allah, as was mentioned by Al-Fayruz Abadi and others. And he mentions a few of them and I will quote, I will quote seven. The first circumstance where a Muslim needs to have extra tawakkul upon his creator and ensure that his reliance upon Allah is full when you exit from your home. When you exit from your home, know very well that Allah is going to assist you to fulfill your good endeavors. As Abi Dawood narrates in his Sunan on the authority of Anas, that the Prophet وسلم, said, إِذَا خَرَجَ الرَّجُلُ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ فَقَالَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ يقال له كفيت وبقيت وهديت وتنحى عنه الشيطان فيقول له شيطان آخر كيف لك برجل هدي وبقي وكفي The messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم says when a man goes out from his house he should say the following dua memorize it بسم الله I place my trust upon Allah and there is no power and strength except in him if a person says this, it will be said to him, you shall be protected, and you shall be defended, and you shall be guided. And shaitan then moves away from him. 
And then shaitan will say to another shaitan, how can we deal with a person who has been guided and defended and protected? So the first circumstance where tawakkul is emphasized more than any other time is when you leave your home. The second circumstance is the moment you struggle financially. When you are struggling with your wealth, with your business, with your income, Allah wants to see from you tawakkul more than any other time. As At-Tirmidhi narrates in his Sunan, on your authority of Ibn Mas'ud, that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, مَن نَزَلَتْ بِهِ فَاقَةٌ فَأَنزَلَهَا بِالنَّاسِ لَمْ تُسَدَّ فَاقَةٌ وَمَن نَزَلَتْ بِهِ فَاقَةٌ فَأَنزَلَهَا بِاللَّهِ يُوشِكُ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِرِزْقٍ عَاجِلٍ أَوْ آجِلٍ He says that whoever is struck with poverty and then he seeks relief from people, relief will not come to him. But whoever is struck with poverty and he seeks relief from Allah, tawakkul, from Allah, the Prophet says, relief will come to him sooner or later. This is the second situation where a Muslim's tawakkul needs to be strong. The third is when people turn away from you. You are a practicing individual, alhamdulillah, upon the sunnah, you want to pray in the masjid and call to the path of Islam, enjoying good and forbid evil. People, rather than assisting you, they start turning away from you. Place your trust in Allah and continue. Allah says, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا If they turn away from you, فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ Allah. Say, Allah is enough for me. لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ None has the right to be worshipped except Him. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتْ I have placed my trust in him. And he is the Lord of the great throne. The fourth of these scenarios or circumstances where your tawakkul needs to be spot on is when you turn away from certain people, the enemies of Islam. You and I know that there are certain people who are bad influence upon you and upon me. You have to turn away from them even if you find it difficult. Allah says, فَأَعْرِضْ عَنْهُمْ Turn away from them. وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ And place your trust in Allah. Don't say it's too difficult, it's embarrassing, they're close, I've known them since we were kids. Turn away from them. And place your trust upon Allah Almighty. The fifth of these circumstances is when making peace with the enemies of Islam. Allah Almighty says, وَإِنْ جَنَحُوا لِلسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ if they incline towards peace, then you incline to it as well. And place your trust upon Allah. You may be unsure, maybe they will break the agreement. Allah says, no, place your trust in Allah Almighty. The sixth of these scenarios, when a person's trust upon Allah Almighty needs to be great, is when you are calling to the path of Islam. When you are giving da'wah. When you are enjoining good and forbidding evil. Your trust needs to be at its peak. Allah says that Shu'aib said to his people, وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ إِنْ أُرِيدُ إِلَّا الْإِصْلَاحَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتْ وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيب Prophet Shu'aib said to his people as he invited them to the path of Allah, I only want to make peace as much as I can. And my help is only from Allah. I place my trust in Him. And to Him I turn in repentance. Allahu Akbar. When you are inviting to the path of Islam, Allah Almighty wants to see you pulling, pulling your reliance and trust upon Him. And the seventh of these circumstances is when life becomes difficult in general. Is it your child who is giving you a hard time? Is it your wealth, your prosperity, your father, your mother, your employee, your employer, your wife, your husband? Is it your health that is giving you a hard time? In that situation, Allah wants to see you relying upon Him more than any other time. Why? Because Allah says, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Say to people, O Muhammad, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will not be struck by anything 
except by that which Allah has decreed for us. He is our protector and let those who believe rely upon Allah. Let those who believe rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are seven of the many situations where a Muslim is emphasized to rely upon his creator. Although al-Muslim al-Haq, the true Muslim, ya'tamidu ala Allahi fi kulli shu'unih. The true Muslim, however, relies upon Allah Almighty in all of his endeavors. This is the true Muslim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.